our first speaker and a special friend and a guest, United States Senator Rob Portman, who has a 100% pro-life voting record and has always been here for us. Beth, thank you very much. It is cold, but we are freezing for a reason, right? So, uh, Beth is right. I, I love to march, and as of yesterday, I found out that most of my Ohio Right to Life friends were not going to be able to be there today for the march, or that they were coming back early, and in fact, Stephanie and I were just talking, most are coming back so they can escape Washington before the snows paralyze the city, maybe for a few days. So I caught the last plane out last night to be here with you today because I wanted to march with my friends and to be here with you all today. We do. And it is great It is great to be here and to see so many great friends. Beth is certainly one. You know, Beth is, as she said, the chief bottle washer and executive director of uh, Columbus Right to Life. She's also an amazing woman uh, in many other respects. I got to know her uh, through the issues of the sanctity of life, but also uh, through St. Mary's Catholic Church. She sent me um, around St. Mary's for the 150th anniversary, just a few blocks from here, recently. And uh, Beth, thank you for your leadership, your commitment, your dedication. Uh, Pastor Coates did warm up the crowd. He always does. He, he, he never fails to do so. Um, Father Franks, I really appreciate your, your words and your inspiration today in reminding us of why we're all here. This is an opportunity for us to express ourselves. It's also an opportunity for us to be a booming voice for others who have no voice. And really, that's what this is all about, isn't it? It's about us being able to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, the least of us, the most vulnerable. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to talk about progress that we've made, uh, but also huge challenges ahead. And today, not just in Washington, D.C., but here in Columbus and all over the country, people will be marching and meeting and talking. And to me, that's good, just to raise the issues. And Father, I think you said it well. This is about a positive movement for life. This is about the sanctity of life. This is about ensuring that everyone has the opportunity, including those in the womb, to enjoy those words of our Constitution that, Father, you talked about. This is what our founders intended. It is an unalienable right, and it's the right to life. The theme of the march this year in Washington was about pro-life and pro-woman go hand in hand. Some of you know that and have been involved with putting together that theme and, and have focused on that. L let me just say something quickly on that if I can. Because I think sometimes uh, those in the media are portraying what we are trying to do in terms of protecting life in a way that somehow is against women's health. That's not true at all. In fact, the legislation that I supported that actually passed the Congress, the House and the Senate, to not provide the federal funding for Planned Parenthood in the wake of those troublesome videos also provided for women's health. That's very important. The legislation specifically said, and what was often missed, is that we have a priority in this. Our legislation maintained women's health care by redirecting that funding that was going to Planned Parenthood to women's health. In fact, redirecting it to community health centers where women here in Ohio already receive that help and can continue to receive more help. So that's what we're about. I also think the good news is that more people are now realizing the importance of the sanctity of life. And I say that from talking to friends, and, and you've done the same with family and your co-workers, uh, but also with the polling shows, and I think a lot of it is because of the science. The science is pretty clear, and more and more people are looking at a sonogram and seeing that life and realizing the importance of it. When you go to the neonatal units of our hospitals around this state, and we have some of the greatest children's hospitals and neonatal units in the entire country here in Ohio, you see these babies who are 23, 24 weeks who can fit in the palm of your hand, and they are alive, and they are being saved by our doctors, and that's good. I think the success of the pro-life movement is in persuading those millions of Americans who might be in the middle, who are undecided, that it is a worthy effort to preserve life at all stages. So I thank you for what you're doing every day. This 
is an opportunity for us to celebrate, but also, again, to face that, that challenge and to be sure that we are moving forward. I'm proud of my 100% record, right to life voting record. I'm proud of the fact that we've been able to continue to make progress on some legislation, even if the President chooses to veto it. We are putting it out there. We are showing the American people the direction of the Congress. I'm proud of my legislation that helps to ensure that families here in Ohio have the opportunity to be heard. My Child Custody Protection Act makes it a federal offense to transport a minor across state lines for an abortion if it would circumvent a state law requiring parental involvement in a minor's choice. That's our law here in Ohio. It is being circumvented. My federal legislation is very important to pass to ensure that doesn't continue to happen. I'm also proud of the fact again, that we're all here again today, freezing for a reason, ensuring that we can stand for those who cannot stand for themselves, standing for the unborn. Thank you for coming. Thank you to, for continuing to promote the sanctity of life and for continuing to be that voice for those who are voiceless. God bless you.